Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel. I'm answering a question from a C3 paper. This is a mock paper that's found in the Physics and Maths Tutor website. And uh, the, here we have um, a question number five from this mock paper for C3, which relates to P3 material here. Um, some They're quoted basically the formulae from the... Um, they're called the factor formulae or the... Not the factor formulae. These are the addition formulae. Okay, a compound angle or addition formula they're called. And we got to use these formulae to show, okay, these results that they've asked us to show. So the first one is involving sine A plus B and sine A minus B. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to write down what the sine of A plus B is using the formula above. So the sine of A plus B is the sine of A times the cosine of B. That's how it expands according to this. Then you've got plus the cosine of A times the sine of B. And the sine of A minus B is basically the same thing, but with a minus instead of a plus between them. So the sine of A times the cosine of B minus the cosine of A times the sine of B. Okay, so I can call this equation 1 and equation 2. And what I have to do is to show that the sum of these two is equal to this. So when I add these together, if I do equation 1 plus equation 2, what will happen, I'll have sine of A plus B plus the sine of, uh, well, we're going to show minus, so we're going to subtract them, actually. So I'm going to subtract them. It says sine of A plus B minus, so I'm going to subtract them. So in fact, I'll do 1 minus 2, sorry. So I'll do equation 1 minus equation 2, because we want to have this. So sine of A plus B minus the sine of A minus B is equal to, when I subtract these, they're, they're, they're like terms. Okay, if I subtract them, they cancel out. And if I subtract these, I have cosine A times sine B. I have minus, minus cosine A times sine B. And you know, when you have a question where it says show that, you should be very clear in showing your steps properly. Okay, so now I can say the sine of A plus B minus the sine of A minus B is equal to, now this can become a plus, so you'll end up with 2 times cosine A times sine B. Okay, which is exactly what we had to show. So that's as required. So there's the answer to part 1. And part 2 says find cosine so that's part one, and part two is about the cosine. So you've got to find cosine A minus B minus cosine A plus B. So let's write down cosine A minus B first. So the cosine of A minus B is equal to. So if you look at this pattern here, the cosine of A minus B would be cosine A cosine B plus, because when it's a minus, that's a plus. Cosine A cosine B plus sine A sine B, which is pretty simple. So you have cosine A cosine B plus sine A, sine B, and then you've got to also write down the cosine of A plus B, which is basically the same thing as we can see, except when it's a plus, when it's a plus between them, there's a minus between those. So it's the same thing, cosine A, cosine B, but it's going to be minus, minus sine A times sine B. Now, we want to find as they said here, the cosine of A minus B minus the cosine of A plus B. So if I call this equation 1 and equation 2, and again I subtract them, I'll have the cosine of A minus B minus the cosine of A plus B, which is what I have to find. Now subtracting these, they will disappear. Subtracting these, I get sine A times sine B minus minus sine A times sine B. So they're like terms, so you're going to have sine A, sine B, plus sine A, sine B, which is 2 sine A times sine B, and that's what this is equal to, cosine of A minus, sorry about my, hand, my really bad handwriting here. This is the cosine of A minus B minus the cosine of A plus B equals 2 sine A, sine B, as required. So we have our statements that we had to prove, proved, okay, 
And we're finished with the first part of the question. Question uh, number part A, part one, and part two. So that concludes 5A. Now for 5B. It says, use the above results to show that sine A plus sine B, sine A plus B minus sine A minus B over cosine A minus B minus cosine A plus B is equal to cot A. So let's take these results here we found. So we can say that sine A plus B minus sine A minus B is 2 cosine A. Let me, let me just take this to the other side. So I'll take this to the other side. Put it over here. Uh, I'll take this to the other side. Okay, so these are the results from that question. Okay, so we've got to use the results to show that this is equal to cot A. So I can just replace sine A plus B minus sine A minus B with 2 cosine A times sine B and divide by cos and I can replace cosine A minus B minus cosine A plus B with 2 sine A sine B. So that's going to equal, well, these cancel out, and I'm left with 2 times cos. well, the cosines cancel, the 2s cancel out as well. So I'm left with cosine A over sine A, cosine A over sine A, which we know is basically cot A. It's a reciprocal of tan A. So we end up with cot A. So we've proved part B pretty simply. And now for part C, um, there's a bit of space I don't need for that now. Okay, so now it says using the results of part B and the exact values of sine theta and cosine theta. Um, find the exact value for cot, cot 75 degrees in its simplest form. So we want to use this result over here, which I will take and write down there so we can see what's going on. So we have to use this result, okay, to find the exact value of cot 75 degrees in its simplest form. Okay, so now, what we can notice here is we'll call this A, we'll call A 75 because we want to find the cot of 75. So we have cot of 75 degrees equals, so I'll have sine of 75 plus B, I don't know what B is yet, minus the sine of 75 minus b, so that b is the same in both of these cases, over, and I have cosine of a, well, a is 75 as we said, 75 minus b minus cosine of 75 plus b. So what we have to do here is we have to write this in exact form. We have to write this in exact form. Okay. And it's no good to just write down this 1 over tan of 75 and find out what it is and write it down. We can use that to check our answer if we want to. But we can't just, uh, you know, we have to show our steps very carefully. So when we're writing down exact values of angles, exact values of angles, okay, we have to think of angles in terms of the angles that we know the exact values for, okay, which is something that we should have learned even in P2, right? So, for example, we know the exact value for the sine, cosine, and tangent of 0 degrees. We know exact values for the sine, cosine, and tangent of 30 degrees, of 45 degrees, of 60 degrees, of 90 degrees, of uh, 120 degrees, for example, 150 degrees, and so on. They're kind of related to those two anyway. 180 degrees. Those are some of the, the angles that we know exact values for. All right. So I want to express the cot of 75, okay, as the sine of 75 plus something minus the sine of 75 minus something. Those two things must be the same. And when I add that number to 75, I should get one of these angles. And when I take away this number from 75, I should get another one of these angles. So what I'm thinking of here is the number 15. Because if I add 15 to 75, I get 90. If I take 15 from 75, I get 
60. And I know exact values for both of those. If I tried other numbers, it, it's possible, for example, if I tried, you, have, you see, we're starting from 75, so it's difficult to get, uh, you know, for example, if I wanted to get to 35, 45, so I would have to I have to subtract, subtract from this 30. Okay, so I have, or I have to subtract it from this 30. But then I have to add to this 30, and that gives me 105, which I don't have exact values for. So you have to try to choose a number that will give you an exact value for each one of these cases, one of these angles which we know the exact values for, for sine, cos, and then tangent. All right, so it must be 15, because uh, we can say that this will then be sine of 75 plus 15 minus the sine of 75 minus 15 over the cosine of 75 minus 15 minus the cosine of 75 plus 15. Okay, so now that gives us the sine of 90, which we know its value is 1, minus the sine of 60, which we know its value is root 3 over 2, over the cosine of 75 minus 15 is 60, which we know is a half, minus the cosine of 90, which we know is 0. So the sine of 90 is 1 minus root 3 over 2 divided by cosine of 60 is a half, and this gives you 0. So it's like 2 times 1 minus root 3 over 2, which is like 2 minus root 3. Okay, 2 minus root 3. Okay, there's the answer. When you divide something by half, you're multiplying it by 2. So there's the answer to this question, part C, 2 minus root 3. Okay, so that concludes this question from the mock exam of C3 from the old specification, which relates very much to this specification now. Um, other questions from this exam, if I get round to answering them, will be in the playlist that will appear in this region here. Other questions from this topic of trig identities and equations from C3, from, the, from P3 now, can be found in this region over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link and you can watch the video at the top here. It tells you how to use my channel more effectively. Thank you very much for watching and see you soon.